On this episode, we are knocking off some high-end Christmas decor from Pottery Barn, saving you hundreds of dollars. So let's get started. It's cold outside, but the fire... First off, I want to thank Cricut for sponsoring this episode. I've worked with them for a long time, and they are going to make the task today so much easier, so much more stress-free, and give us a very professional end look, and I am so excited about it. For our first knockoff Christmas DIY, I found this Mary sign on Pottery Barn that was so beautiful. It had kind of red shiplap, and it had Mary with a lit up marquee sign. It was beautiful, and it was $500. <laughs> way out of my budget but I knew with a little elbow grease I could do that for pennies on the dollar and possibly free so stay tuned for how I may or may not have pulled that off <laughs> in order to do this the first thing I did is I went into Cricut Design Studio to design my lettering and all of that. I looked at the dimensions. I tried to find a font that I felt was very similar to the font that they used, which I ended up using Tahoma. And then I just laid it all out. I made sure to put kind of like a rectangle behind it and I even made it red to help me visualize what it might look like. So then once I had my lettering all laid out how I wanted it to, I knew that I could make my life even easier by putting all of the holes already in our design. This will help in our construction so much. Laying things out, it will totally simplify things. And I wanted to start here because this kind of, we're going to be cutting this out on heavy chipboard and I knew that this cutting process would take a little bit of time and then we could go start on some other stuff while this was cutting. So once we had it all designed, we are gonna cut this out on my Cricut Maker. You could do it on the Cricut Maker 3, but it does need to be one of their Maker products. And this is, will give you the capability of cutting it out on a wood product, or in my case, what I ended up using was chipboard. You're gonna wanna make sure you switch out the blade to a knife blade, one specific for cutting wood, and you just open that up, slip it in, shut it, and it's good to go. And then you hit cut. I selected a heavy chipboard on mine and you will see that it will want to go through 24 passes. I think they just do that just to be safe but I would keep an eye on it because depending on how sharp your blade is mine cut anywhere from eight passes to 12 passes you know when it was nice and fresh and sharp it was like eight and by the end it was closer to 12. So once it's cut through you don't want to keep running it through and you'll notice as it's cutting that i tape down all of my edges in blue painters tape because it really needs to stick into place you don't want it budging at all and it is kind of a thick product so that tape really helps hold it in place. Okay, so we've got all of our lettering sorted out, but now what about that shiplap? About this time last year, I was like up to my eyeballs in putting in a whole fireplace wall that I really wanted done for Christmas time. From that wall, I had a whole bunch of approximately two foot cutoffs from my shiplap that have just been kicking around for about a year. <laughs> in my scrap pile and the original sign was a little bit bigger than that so I ended up scaling it back a touch but I did seven 25 inch long sections of this shiplap on the bottom we didn't want that little groove piece showing and I had one that was kind of a little bit damaged already so I just ran that through my table saw if you don't have a table saw you could use a jigsaw a circular saw use whatever you have on hand just kind of cut that bottom piece off there we go we have all of our pieces they are a little rough for wear. They do not look beautiful. They got like staining on them. They're ugly, <laughs> but they're going to be beautiful. I promise. But now how do we attach them? So then I went into my scrap pile and I'm like, well, what can I attach these to? So I had these two strips and they, they're mismatched. They're not even the same thing, but I knew once it was painted, you wouldn't be able to tell. So they were like uh, one by twos and I put a little bit of wood glue on them and then I attached them to the back using some nails and then I, for added assurance, I did end up flipping it over and adding some more nails on the front side and then putting that all out. But you just wanna make sure that they are 
securely fastened on either side and that is what's going to hold all of that shiplap together so it doesn't like break into a million pieces so and then we're i'm going to let that wood glue dry a bit then we're going to go get our chipboard merry letters <laughs> and then we are going to lay them out onto our sign to get all of the spacing right and then we're going to take a pencil and kind of mark each one of those holes and then what you're going to want to do is take a wood boring bit that's a mouthful <laughs> but it's a little attachment that you attach to your drill and three quarters inch and you just drill those holes Then we're gonna take it inside and we are going to use some Waverly Red Lacquer Chalk Paint. I found that this color is very close to the version on Pottery Barn and we do two good coats of this chalk paint and let that dry. And then I take our Merry Letters and I start by painting it out in a white chalk paint. We take some Gorilla Glue as well as some hot glue for that instant stick and we layer that on really good and then we line it up with the holes that we already pre-drilled, right? So it keeps it nice and neat and clean. And then we just do this on all of the letters. So they should line up, you glue them and you use those as the guide. And then we're gonna let that sit for a second. And then if you need to do any touch up paint here or there, you can totally do that. Before we do anything else, we are going to attach some hooks to hang it if you want to. So I just use some D-ring hooks, just screw them into place up near the top, and then you have a way to hang it on your wall. Then we're gonna take some string lights. I had these in my stash already, so I didn't have to buy them, but they're like the round globe looking ones that are kind of big i would say one to two inches i don't know they're they're pretty good size we're going to unscrew all of the light bulbs right and then we are going to push the string lights through each one of the holes now there's you'll need one that has 30 lights on it then we're going to flip it over and then we're going to screw in all of our light bulbs how easy is that right <laughs> now i didn't end up doing anything to kind of finish off the back you could take some staples and kind of staple down the string lights but i just didn't really want to because i if I need to adjust anything or move anything or remove it for something else in the future. Ours is a tiny bit different than Pottery Barn's version. Okay, so my letters ended up being a little bit bigger than the inspiration piece. I like it better. I'm gonna be honest with you. I like the bigger letters. I think mine looks so much like the inspiration one. I'm a little partial to mine because it was so much cheaper. Mine literally didn't cost me anything because I used everything in my stash, but that's not realistic. So I'm gonna give you a realistic number. I think if you went out and bought everything that you needed for this and you had all of the tools and all of the equipment already, you would be looking at about $40. Remember the inspiration piece was $500 and ours was $40. That is less than 10% of the original cost. I love how this turned out. I am totally obsessed with this. I am. I don't really have this color decor in my main room decorating, but I am seriously tempted after this episode and all of the cute stuff that we make here to switch it out because I love the sign. It's so cute. How do you think I did on the dupe? Do you think I did it justice? What do you think? Okay, so for the next dupe, it is going to be so easy because I've done all the work for you. You're welcome. <laughs> so I've designed this free image for you. I will link it in the description box below as well as that other link for the Cricut file. So I looked at our inspiration piece and I looked to find a font that was very similar. I ended up going with one called Helenum and I put in just all the words, fa la la la, ho ho ho, Mary, all of that. And I put them in a circle 
and I knew that my coasters were gonna be about four inches. And then all we did is we cut it out. Now Cricut had this permanent vinyl that was just in the right color, like that red lacquer color that we did on the Mary sign. It was a really close match. It was a gloss finish. I wish it was kind of matte finish because the inspiration was matte. The permanent vinyl will kind of act as a protectant on our coaster. And I know that I'm gonna get super crisp, clean lines, no bleeding, no mess, and it will be done in no time flat. So all you're gonna need to do is go to this file, put it in, cut it out, then we're gonna weed it and then put on our transfer tape. I got these coasters in the Target Dollar spot for three dollars so all you need is kind of like a white or an off-white tile coaster these were beautiful white tile ones they ended up being like one dollar a piece and then we just put our decal on the top of the coaster and that's it like seriously it's that easy now i did think about this if you can't find like these coasters like they're out of stock at your target or you just can't find them then you can just get some wood circles that are four inches you could leave them natural or you could paint them out you can adjust the size of my file and make it work for your one and so i know that you'll be able to replicate this no problem and they are so cute and so so close in look to our inspiration piece. Now, the inspiration one was $15 and that doesn't include shipping or anything like that with shipping and everything. It will definitely be over 20 bucks, but we'll just call it $15. I'm gonna call mine $5 just because our coasters were $1 a piece and then a little bit for vinyl for all four of them. Ours, I think are nicer, I do. <laughs> Call me crazy. You can call me crazy in the comment section, but you'll have to let me know what you think. I had rather have these tile versions versus cork versions, and I'd definitely rather pay $5 versus $15 to $20. <laughs> well, how do you think I did with this dupe? Let me know. So for our next Christmas Pottery Barn knockoff, I am knocking off these beautiful tea towels. And now you're kind of seeing a theme here. There's a huge collection at Pottery Barn right now of all of this stuff. And honestly, we could have done a ton. <laughs> and they all coordinate. In fact, I have some pillows from a Christmas bedroom a little while back that would totally go with a set. So maybe I'll have to do like a little Christmas love in my bedroom, we'll see. So for our next one, we're gonna be knocking off these little tea towels. And so I did, again, all the work for you. I went into Cricut Design Studio. I actually used a couple of different fonts here um, because there were a few different fonts it looked like it used in the inspiration one. And I wrote the piece, I wrote the bright, I wrote the merry, and I kind of just followed visually what it looked like to me. And then I added some kind of swirly lines. And then I also added like a little ribbon strip at the bottom near the edge. So I just kind of played around with this. So once I got that all designed, make sure you reverse it on mirror image. I cut it out on some everyday iron-on in this kind of red color. Then of course we weed it and I just, I don't know, I love weeding, especially a heat transfer vinyl. It's just so satisfying to peel it back. Once we got that done, we set that aside. Now I found this flower sack towel at Dollar Tree, but it was too big, but I needed two towels. So I looked at the dimensions and I'm like, you know what, it will work to cut it down the middle. So you don't need to do this but it will save you a lot of money. So I cut it down the middle and then I just zigzagged the edges and folded them over and sewed it down on that seam. Now our one $1 towel is two, so making them 50 cents each. So now we have the two towels. I press them out really good. They look ready to go. Now it's time to put it on our towels and I lay it out on our pressing pad and I decide to put parchment paper underneath it because it's a little gauzy. I was a little unsure 
that would like stick through or what would happen. Everything ended up being okay. So I lay out how I want it on the towel and then I noticed that um, my vinyl was a little bit too big. So I just took some scissors and cut it down and then I pressed it at 330 degrees for 40 seconds in all of the different sections. You can see like it didn't cover it all in one fell swoop. And then we flipped it over and I did it on the back 20 seconds in each section. And then we flipped it back over and peeled it back and ta-da! <laughs> it looked amazing. And then I quickly repeated this process for the second tea towel in the set, which was just the merry one. And that's it. Like, honestly, so cute, right? So you can see here that my font is a little bit big. You don't get the entire word on it. I think it's super cute. I love how this turned out. It doesn't matter to me that it's a little bit larger than the original Pottery Barn version. It really echoes the same sentiment and ours was so much cheaper. Okay, so we used a lot of heat transfer vinyl on this one. So it ended up being about $10 total for our version versus $30. $30 for theirs. Again, not including shipping and all of those other fees that you would expect to pay. I think these are super adorable. I think that they would make a really cute gift. You could even put like all three of these together and give it as a gift. It would be adorable. Made with love, right? Or you can just keep them for yourself because they're super cute. Okay, so on all of our DIYs, we saved like $500 from the original cost. So that's a ton of money. In fact, it's so much money that you could buy a couple of Cricut machines with that amount. So just keep that in mind. And as a little thank you, Cricut has given me a coupon code, Natalie10. There'll be more details about that discount in the description box below. So grab the code, grab the details. And if you enjoyed this episode, here's another one that I think you'll like as well. And if you haven't done so already, consider hitting that subscribe button right here. It's super easy to do and I would love it if you joined the DIY Niner family and to all of my DIY Niners, I just want to remind you that you are more powerful than you know. We'll see you next time. Bye.